Hello everyone. I hope everybody's had a, a good week this week and here we just get thinking about it. We're basically what uh, uh, this Friday will be a, a one week away from Christmas. It's hard to believe that that this year's almost over. I think a lot of people would say we're glad it's almost over. You know, it's and that's kind of what we want to talk a little bit about uh, about uh, tonight is you know just is I guess things that that can test your faith you know and and this this year is definitely uh, I think a test of a spiritual strength and faith and trust for sure. Um, I guess uh, we'll just get, go ahead and get on in the lesson here. Uh, before we do that, uh, I will, uh, let's pray here at this time. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this day that you've given us, dear God. Thank you, Lord, for your health and your strength, dear God. And, and just ask you, Lord, to be the ones that's sick in our church, dear God. I ask you, Lord, just to bless them, dear God. Help them, Lord, because uh, we know you're the great physician and you're the, you're the one that can do all things, dear God. And we just thank you, Lord, for your help. We thank you, Lord, for your kindness, dear God, your righteousness, dear God. Thank you, Lord, that you are the supreme judge and the and, and the king of the universe now. But you and thank, dear Lord, that you're going to be the the king of, on this earth here one of these days, dear God. And, and just thank you, Lord, for 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 saving me, dear God. And and just thank you, Lord, for salvation. Thank you, Lord, for that plan of salvation and the grace age we're living in, and and that we can still enjoy and have the privilege of 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 being able just to be saved if we're lost, dear God, that, that, that is just asking you and, and realizing we're a sinner, dear God, and, and, and we do that, Lord, and trust you, Lord, and that you'll save us, dear God. Thank you, Lord, for that, and ask you, Lord, to be with me here as a teacher here tonight, that I uh, just say something that, that, that'll that help people, Lord, but that'll be, but all things that should be done in your will, dear God, and everything I say, I hope that's according to your will, dear God, ask these things in your blessed and holy name. Amen. Well, what I'm going to be talking a little bit about, about tonight is, uh, uh, is basically one verse. So I'll let everyone turn in their Bibles tonight to Romans uh, chapter 8, verse 18. Uh, I think this is a verse that's and I think it's, I've been hearing uh, this verse read a little bit more. I feel like here lately from different people different sources you know and and honestly it's it's a verse that I'm not really heard really quoted really that much you know and I think about you know preaching sermons and 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 just and talking about the Bible but yeah it just you know it it just overwhelms me just when I read this verse every time I read it, it's so powerful and so much truth in it which we know that all the Bible's true but it is just I think it's just a, a verse that that really, uh, well, I know it just it, it's really drills into my heart. Romans eight eighteen. Uh, so it says, "For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us." Now, I might hit on a few other verses around it tonight, but that's the the main verse I want to concentrate on tonight. Uh, but, you know, I get to thinking, you know, that, you know, this, of course, this verse deals with sufferings and, and things that were, that we go through in this life, you know, that's a very timeless verse, you know, you know, just, well, you just, first of all, we just think about Jesus, I mean, who who better to have a, a comparison of heaven and this earth? Only he had a comparison before coming to earth. You know, he was in heaven for eternity, and then in eternal past, then he comes on this earth to live three, 33 and a half years before dying and rising again to, and being resurrected to go back to heaven again. So it's, you know, when you think about that, you know, he, think about being in heaven and all the, the glory of heaven and all the righteousness and the pureness 
and the perfectness and the joy of heaven, you know, and to think that he he left all that, you know, and I think this is this really goes well with the, the Christmas season right now, and that, that's the reason I really want to focus on that too, along with this verse, is that he, you know, he came to die for our sins. He was the he's basically the he was the sacrifice and took the punishment we should have had and died for us. But, you know, and, and people talk about, you know, that that time, you know, the, you know, the, the crucifixion, crucifixion, the resurrection, and all that. And that's the, the crucial point right there in enabling us ha to have salvation. But you think about it, he lived here 33 and a half years on an earth that is... So many ways, the opposite of heaven. He came down here in a place where, where there's pain, where you know, physical, mental pain. He uh, came down here where there's sin. Came down here where there's hate. Came down here where people mocked him. And even before he was crucified, I mean, he came in to endure a, a, a life that's 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 full of headache, heartache. You know, and it's just, it's, it's just amazing. That just shows you how much Jesus loved us. I mean, I mean, it, it's not not only the, it's not only the crucifixion and the, all the terrible suffering that he did there, and he, he suffered more than any human being that's ever existed. But he he came and left the glory of heaven to live as a as a man in the flesh among people on this earth. I mean that just in that itself to leave that glory in heaven to come down here that, that shows you the uh, just the absolute eternal I mean infinite love that he has for us you know and it's it's just amazing to me to think about that you know and you know it's I mean that'd be like you know living in the most glorious mansion you know and then and then coming down to you know to, to live in a shack you know it's just it's just what i mean talk about a a lord standard of living to come from heaven and come to live on this earth you know but it, it's just amazing to live on a cursed earth you know after living in a uncursed heaven in a perfect heaven a wonderful heaven but uh uh but I'll talk about it just a little bit about some of the verses, you know, before verse 18 here. You know, there's a lot of talk here in verses 14 through 17 about, you know, that, uh, that you know, that we've uh, received the spirit of adoption. You know, that, you know, we, uh, we, we're going to, we enjoy and are going to enjoy all the benefits that, an heir has, you know, Jesus is the is the heir. You know, he's the son of God. You know, and the the Israelites they were his chosen people. But when Jesus came on this earth and and he uh, after he died and went to heaven, you know, the grace age began, and the Gentiles, all the people that are not Jews, were, were grafted in. So we're we're enjoying that spirit of adoption. You know that you know that you know that you know maybe in first glance you you think we w we wouldn't have had or couldn't have had, but we we're getting to ha to have that uh, adoption of just being a child of God and get to enjoy the benefits of being a child of God, even on this earth as bad as it, this earth can be to live in. You know we we still have some wonderful privileges in being a child of God, and that's. It's a wonderful thing, you know, that having this Bible here is that's a wonderful privilege. Being able to pray to God is a wonderful privilege, and and people look down upon prayer as well. That's that's not much help. That's not much to do right there. You couldn't you do more than just sit around and pray about something? You know, it's you know we've said this a lot in our church. It you know it's not the least you can do. It's the most you can do. We're limited. If we try to go do something ourselves, we're limited on what we can do. But we, if you take it, 
request to God. I mean, he can do all things. He's all powerful. Yeah, we might have to do something, you know, to to get a certain good thing accomplished, but with God's help, you know, how much better and easier it's going to be to have the power of God, have the will of God on our side if we do have to physically do something. There are sometimes you just, you know, you pray for things you can't do anything. You know, all you can do is pray, and, and that's the most powerful thing you can do. Sometimes we just have to pray and trust God and, and let Him handle it, you know, and and you know I'm I'm glad that I'm a, a a joint heir with Christ, you know. But being saved and, and becoming a child of God, I also became a joint heir. You know I'm, you know I'm 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 going to have part of the estate in heaven. You know praise God for that. You know and all of us that are saved, we're going to be joint heirs in heaven. We're all going to get to enjoy a part of that heavenly estate. You know, and and it's just a wonderful thing to think about. You know, it's it provides a lot of hope if we'll concentrate on that, think on that. But the devil doesn't want us to think about that. He does not want us to think about that. He tries to do everything to get us to not think about that. Think about God. Think about joy. Think about peace and all the glorious benefits of being a Christian and. Of knowing God and and being acquainted with God and being able to talk with God, He wants to pull our minds and our hearts away from those things, so He can get us, beat us down, and discourage us and depress us. And my goodness, He has a lot of ammunition to use, for sure. And especially in this time we're living in, this year we're living in, He's had a lot of a lot of ammunition to use, for sure. Uh, and I, you know, and uh, I guess at this point I won't try to get into this verse, but but I, I want to first say uh, I'm not coming to you as any powerhouse of faith whatsoever. Uh, I tell you this, this has just been a, a, a just a really really hard year, you know, and and I know I'm not alone in that, you know, when you think of. Uh, of the the virus and in the election, you know those are all national things. That, you know, if, and then you think of just some deaths that's been in our family and in our community. Uh, you know, you may say, well, there's always people dying. And that's true. That's true. But you know, or just been, I don't know, just a lot more people. I feel like I that I know that's 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 passed on. You know, and. And uh, there's just been lot, lots of things, you know, that's just, I mean, I've, I've just had trouble really placing my trust in God like I should. And I've let the devil have his way with me. Uh, and I'll just, I'm just being totally honest with you tonight. And, uh, but, you know, this is a reason that, that I feel like the Lord has really just led me to this verse here tonight. I mean, I just... I just started praying a little bit about it, and it, you know, not really knowing what I was going to teach tonight, to be honest with you, and you know, I just felt like I was just led right to this verse, so, you know, and, and in just a few minutes, I just felt like I had everything I needed to say. God just already just pumped me full of what I need to say and was ready to go with it, but uh, but we'll get in this verse here, you know, that, and, you know, of course, we know that Romans is Paul's writings, and he's speaking here, and it, and uh, to re read the first part of this verse, it says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, I just want to talk about that. Uh, I guess you might say that clause right there. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time. You know, think about, you know, that, you know, and you know, think of it two different ways, you know, because, you know, like I said, this is Paul writing this verse, and, you know, I can't imagine what kind of sufferings he was going through. I know nothing, nothing compared to me, but, uh, you know, I'm sure it, uh, as a, as a servant of Christ, he, he endured a lot of, a lot of hard physical hardships, you know, you know, Traveling around and 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 probably just really trying to live and get around in a way to where he can preach the gospel, but you know, but 
I guess in one sense trying to survive and be able to do that from day to day because he, he knew his head is on the chopping block. You know, he, he knew people, lots of people hated him. People in high places hated him, you know, just, just because he wanted to preach Christ and preach the goodness of Christ. And that's, you know, and, and, and then not to mention, you know, all the, the suffering probably uh, spiritually, the suffering from the, from the devil himself. And as I know, he whispered in his ear, just like he does our ears today, just trying to uh, put everything in our head just to depress us and discourage us. You know, and that was, you know, uh, uh, that was his present time. You know, I think about our present time, you know. I've already mentioned some of the things we're going through, and and you know, and and I think in a, in a national sense, you know, I, you know, I just feel like you know, we know the Bible says that that things are going to wax worse and worse, and we know that's that's Bible prophecy, and the Bible is always going to be true, you know, but you know we don't know how much worse it's going to get, and at what time as Christians, you know, the the Bible doesn't reveal the when and the, all the hows and everything like that. But we know it's going to wax worse and worse. And and I think it's natural for, for anybody that's a Christian and wants to be a Christian and wants to see their family live like Christians, wants to see their their church function and, and behave biblically, wants their community to behave biblically, wants their county, state, and their nation to behave and think biblically. This is naturally going to bother any any Christian that believes in the Bible and and believes this is God's word and and this Bible tells us on um, how we should think and how we should live, what is right and what is wrong. It's right here. It's not for we as individuals don't get to choose what's right and wrong. Right here is what tells us. And. If there's things we deal with that the Bible doesn't specifically mention, then but we're still to use this Bible to base our decision on whether something is right or something is wrong, and 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 we know that the times are getting more and more that even in the United States of America, uh, Christians are starting to suffer, and but uh, but as time goes on, I feel like we're 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 under a, an administration, an authority that's going to promote more Christian persecution, more Christian discrimination. When this is, you know, supposed to be a nation based on freedom, supposed to be based on, you know, free speech, freedom of religion, you know, but we see those things being taken away, you know, and it's like it's, it's just happening before our eyes and you'd have to be blind not to see it, you know, but... But despite those things, we're still to, to carry the carry our cross. We're to still stand up for what's right. We're still to uh, walk and talk as a Christian. God never said anywhere that, that it was okay just to sit down and give up. We're to, we're to keep trying. We're to keep plugging away. We're to keep doing His will despite the opposition. Because uh, we know... Here in the next uh, clause here, it says, uh, I'll read again here, it says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared. Now look at that, are not worthy to be compared. You know, to say something is worthy is just like, it's, you know, it's given kind of value to something. You know, uh, to say somebody has a job, are they worthy of their position? Do they deserve it? Or I guess it's it's about deserving. You know, I'm and I'm not worthy to go to heaven. I don't deserve to go to heaven. If you were based on on me, what I've said and what I've done in my life, you know, I would. I you know, if it was just solely based on Jason Wolf, I would be going to hell. It's just that simple. Because it's because one, I mean, God demands perfection. To go to heaven, without Jesus, you'd have to be perfect. You'd have to be without sin. And there's not one person that's ever been without sin. Not, not one. Therefore, we need Jesus. We need, we need to trust in Him. 
and believe and, and, and confess that he, and that his salvation, that he saved us and trust us that he will save us, trust that he died for our sins, and we'll be saved. We, it makes us, through him, we become worthy to go to heaven. You know, Jesus' blood being, being covered of all our sins makes us have the value to be worthy of heaven is really basically what I'm saying here. And then when you read this verse, the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared. Not worthy to be compared. You know, I think about that and the sufferings that we're enduring here, the pain, the mental anguish, the fear that, that, that we may have in our hearts uh, in this day and time, are not worthy to be compared there to with the glory with the glory that's coming with the you know the glory of heaven is what it's talking about here that if you were to weigh this all the sufferings just some of the the worst sufferings of, of any person you can think of on this earth and you could put it on a scale and then and then uh, you were to uh, put all the glory of heaven on a scale, it would it would be, you know, it, there it'd be no comparison at all. I mean, our suffering would be like a grain of sand, and and the glory of heaven, you know, it, well you can't you can't even put a measure on the glory of heaven because anything to do with God and heaven, and His glory and His power, is infinite. There's there's nothing there's no way you can measure it. But if I were to measure it, it'd be like uh, the sufferings would be a grain of sand, and the the glory of heaven would be like the uh, planet Earth. That would be just just how what a huge difference that would be, you know. And and I know there's going to be a time, you know, that one day those of us those of us that are saved and we reach heaven, and I feel like there's going to be a time we're going to think, man. <laughs> Yeah, that was rough, but it was just a little while. It just, it was such a small thing compared to what we've got now. I mean, it was nothing compared to what we've got now in heaven. You know, and and I'm sure there's people already in heaven right now that's, that's saying that, but in one day those of us on this earth that are saved will say the same thing, that the, our sufferings at this present time are not worthy to be compared with with the glory which shall be revealed in us. You know, that glory, you know, the Bible speaks of it. It speaks all the, of, the, of the wonderful things of heaven, the glory of heaven, but, but, the, but the Bible can't, hasn't even begun to truly describe and explain how, how joyous and how wonderful and how glorious and how, exci how exciting it's going to be in heaven when we reach there. We just, we, I don't think the, the, the Bible, the, all the books of this world could not fully describe and explain how wonderful heaven is going to be. And, and that's the thing, we, you, know, and, and, you know, it's not being revealed yet. Because that's what it says here in this last phrase here. It says, which shall be revealed in us. That glory... Of heaven, it's not going to be fully revealed till we get there. Boy, when when it's revealed, it's going to be like wow! It's I just can't believe just how wonderful this place is, and how you know, and how you know, even though yes, the the earth is a, it's a cursed place. You know, we we know the Bible says it's you know that this life is just it's just uh, trouble and tribulations. You know this this that's what this life is. It's, we're not. Expect anything else, you know. Not to say there's good, not good things and happy things that in this life, but but overall there's just a, a lot of pain and a lot of suffering. But one day there's not gonna, we're not gonna have that anymore. And uh, there's one thing I'd like to read here before I close here, and this is just something I read in in a, in a commentary right here. I'd like to uh, to share with you. Uh, it says here, uh, 
uh, it, it starts out, you know, we're just, uh, it's specifically referring to this verse. It says, by this, therefore, Christians may be sustained. That verse alone can sustain us. Their sufferings may seem great, but they should remember that they are nothing, nothing in comparison with future glory. They are nothing in degree, for these are light compared with that eternal weight of glory. You know, all, all the, the burden that we have on us is light compared to all that glory we're going to be immersed in. The happiness, the joy we're going to have, because there's not going to be any death. There's not going to be any pain. We're not going to, there's not going to be any farewells. We're all going to be together forever in heaven with God, with, the, with Jesus, with the angels. We're all going to be there together. And, you know, all those things that we associate with in this earth, it's just, they're going to pass away. All these terrible things of earth are just going to, they're just going to be like a vapor. They're just there for a moment when you compare it to eternity. They're just there, they're just going to be there for a moment. They're just going to pass away. They'll just be gone. You know, it'll just be like, like they were never there. That's the way, I think it's the way it'll be. Because the scars that we have from this earth of, of what we've suffered, they'll, they'll be gone when we reach heaven. It says here again, that for these sufferings are but for a moment, but the glory shall be eternal. These will soon pass away, but that glory will ne shall never become dim or diminished. It will increase and expand forever and ever. I hope this will be a help uh, to all of you here tonight. Uh, so uh, I, I guess this time I don't have anything else. I hope you all have a good night. And, and may the God bless you and have a Merry Christmas. Thank you.